We're going to talk today about axes and planes and how they relate to the movements of joints. And to start with, what is an axis? Uh, it's a, an infinitely long straight line and they're relevant to joint movements because joints can move around axes. Um, to avoid confusion, I'm usually just going to use a dot instead of arrows to indicate the ends of the axis, but you got to keep in mind that it is an infinite line. A plane is an infinite, flat, two-dimensional surface that also extends in both of its dimensions, but we typically just draw it as a square so we can visualize how it's positioned in space. And these are relevant to joint movements because a uh, joint can move, typically joints move in a two-dimensional manner, which means that you can fit that arc or circle of movement within a plane. And when we do that, um, we can also talk about the corresponding axis, which lies at right angles to that plane. Now we live in three-dimensional space, so there are three primary axes and three primary planes. And I'm going to use these mannequins to talk about those axes and planes. First of all, we have the uh, frontal plane, which divides the body into an anterior and a posterior part. Then we have the sagittal planes, which divide the body into left and right part. So we're imagining that the the right side of the body is kind of behind the plane here. That's the sagittal plane. And then we have the transverse plane, which divides the body into a superior and inferior part. We can draw our plane. And this is a lot like you're standing in a pool of water. Um, parts of you that are submerged are shaded in to show that they're below. That's the transverse plane. So there's a corresponding axis for each of these primary planes. The frontal plane is perpendicular to the anterior-posterior axis. So we can, let's draw that through the shoulder because we're going to use that later. It can be um, intersect through this body at any point, but we're going to use that as a joint example. That's the anterior posterior axis. The sagittal plane corresponds to the left right axis. So, again, using the shoulder as an example. left right axis and the transverse plane corresponds to the superior whoops superior inferior axis also called the vertical axis And to keep in mind how the axis is always perpendicular to the corresponding plane, it's useful to think about everyday objects. So we have things like umbrellas, where the handle of the umbrella corresponds to the axis around which joint movement occurs. Um, or you can describe that movement as occurring within the plane of the actual umbrella part. Or you can talk about a wheel and axle. And the axle would then correspond to the axis around which movement occurs. The wheel would correspond to the plane in which that movement 
um, also occurs. Now, given a movement, how can we decide what plane it occurs in? And we'll take some examples with the figures we've already drawn. So, a movement like abduction, which is a movement of a body part away from the midline, would occur typically in the frontal plane. We can picture this hand being brought up to the right side of the person, that's abduction. Notice how if you draw the arrow right, there's really only one plane that it would fit into without uh, you know, intersecting it and going out the other side. A movement like flexion typically occurs in the sagittal plane. So again, using the shoulder as an example, you can flex your shoulder. That would bring the hand up uh, forward in front of you. Flexion. And we can talk about rotation. Uh, rotation movements typically occur in the transverse plane. So, for example, if you turn your head, um, that is movement around the body axis. You can describe that as a two-dimensional um, arc or circle that occurs within the transverse plane.